How long have I known you now? Too long. <laughs> um, because I'm still surprised how many of you are still afraid of me. Or needy with me, one or both. Because it, it, it's sort of, uh, I find it quite strange sometimes how you get all afraid and, and I feel the fear in the room and everything every time we begin. Well, I think a lot of it is to do with fear of uh, truth, really, more than anything else. But also, you know, a lot of times you're imposing your dad emotions upon me. Like, anybody who's an authority figure to you, you then start imposing your daddy emotions to. And then as a result of that, I get a lot of your emotions that should be going towards da your daddies. Does that make sense? <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out... Where are all my lips? Did you all get your homework? Yeah. yeah. Alright. Did you all do your homework? Yeah. Did anyone not do their homework? You didn't get the homework? Um, if you don't get the homework, then you mustn't be on the list. And if that's the case, if you can let... I think who's managing the list at the moment? Um, Monique. Monique? Is Monique here at the moment? No, she's not. If you can just email Monique if you've got her number, uh, her email address. Um, I am recording. Yes. Um, so yeah, that way you get added to this. All right. Well, what we'll do today first is we will firstly get, look at your homework, and then we will do a little bit of channeling. Sound all right? Um, I found it very interesting with the channeling because m many of you have sent out, sent out to um, other people the channeling and when you're coming along to a team meeting what I would like you to remember is the team has, um, is going to be doing this thing together and anyone who's not a member of the team shouldn't be receiving what the team is, going, is working through. The problem with sending it out to everyone else uh, who is not a part of the team is they don't understand the background of the information. So we could actually be sending out error-based information because a lot of times in this team we will be sending you things to challenge you. Does that make sense? So that's what we will be doing a fair, fairly often. And every time you send this out then to somebody else, you are basically not putting with it what the team's desire is, and then the person then assumes that, oh, this channeling must be an accurate channeling, and then away they go with that, which is not very kind to them, but it's also not very good because they don't receive all of this information about the channeling itself. So can, in future, you please, with the team, only send the details to other team members, and if you wish to send it to somebody else who is not a part of the team, can you please ask the team leader for permission to do so? Is that okay with everyone? It's just that um, this, inf this information got sent around. Uh, it's actually now travelling around the world we're, where we're getting stuff back from all sorts of people around the place, all saying, you know, what a good channelling it was for myself and Mary and so forth. And today you're going to find out that that might not be the case. So, so we want to, um, you know, obviously we don't want that to happen in the future. Does that make sense? Good day. Okay. Now I'm sorry, but I'm sorry about if, 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 if yeah, if he's going to keep doing that, then we just need to. Sorry about that. Sister, I, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm uh, competing with him, <laughs> and I'm already competing with a lot of spirits at the moment for your ears, so that makes it even more difficult. And yesterday, if I can just address some things yesterday, yesterday there was so much resistance hey, in the room, and I still felt after we'd finished that really um, not much had been accomplished, unfortunately, with the arts team. So. Um, it's just something to bear in mind that 
Many of you still have spirits really shutting you down when it comes to listening. And, uh, and it feels to me like I'm sort of battling um, with those spirits for your attention. So if you can just uh, consider that when we do these kind of sessions together, it will help be very helpful for you, but it'll also we'll come out of the session feeling a lot more open. How, how, those of you who were present yesterday, how did you feel about it? And please use your hands too, because what we're going to try to do is collect your voice with the boom pole. Elaine? When you gave me some truths, firstly, it was like they pushed me back, don't listen, and outside afterwards, like they're saying, don't listen to him. Mm -hmm. He's just got this thing anyway about these women. Yep. However, for myself, it clarified to me yep. what I felt like I was getting that, and I hadn't... On the way home, I was going to do my screaming and whatever. Yeah. And because I hadn't, it's now obvious to me what happens when I don't. Yeah, yeah. What's but happening a lot... initially, it was trying to stop me listening. Yeah. Well, that's happening a lot for many. I can actually see them interfering with the listening process inside of you. And a lot of the times they're saying, don't listen to him, don't listen to him. He's just, you know, he's just got to be in his bonnet or whatever. And, and they use a lot of... Um, um, they use a lot of manipulation techniques in order to stop you from hearing what I'm saying to you. And the unfortunate part of that is that you'll go away then questioning it right at the beginning. Now, yesterday, I had almost the majority of the audience being influenced by those women's spirits questioning absolutely everything I was saying. Now, I'm OK with you questioning it yourself, but the reality is most of you have spent many years questioning it already. And if you haven't resolved something about the questions by this stage, you've sort of got to start to wonder whether you're ever going to. Um, and, and I feel quite strongly that it, it's more to do with the spirit influence that is causing you to go back to questioning all the time. I wasn't personally questioning. I was like thinking, wow, because I could feel myself in that. And, yeah. You know, and I just wanted, yeah. It yeah. really clarified to me what happens when I don't feel. Yeah. And, cause, yeah. Yeah, we, when myself and Mary, we just see them, when we're talking, we just see them click into a person immediately. And it's like shut down immediately almost. And, and from that moment on, from our perspective, it's almost pointless saying another word. Because basically, they've got your ear and I, and I haven't. And, and that's okay. It, it just depends on who you want to listen to. Well, if I was <laughs> or else, they would have shut me down. Yeah, yeah exactly. Because I really wanted to hear. Yeah. yeah. So the thing is to be aware that many of you are heavily influenced by them and, and this is something that we want to address in this, uh, today as well in the mediumship team. Any other comments that if you have? Um, just for myself, I, um, just later on in the afternoon, I found that I, and evening, I found that um, I, I, I got into my, I allowed myself to get more into my rage instead yep. of sort of skipping over it. Good on you. And it, it was um, very, very potent for me. Yeah. Yep. And um, I also, it led to a lot of um, what felt like my own grief. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, also I had some insights into just like feelings that are very old feelings for me and I recognise them as spirits. Yeah. And um, I, as soon as I recognised them, I could feel what was underneath them. Yeah. And... Um, when I yeah. had that discussion, short discussion with you about humiliation, they kicked in immediately there and just really tried to shut you down from that point onwards okay. yesterday. Yeah. Um, so that, that's just something to be aware of. That feeling, obviously, is a feeling that you don't like to feel. And they kicked in immediately. And, and this is what's happening for many of you. There's feelings you don't like to feel, and that's when they kick in. Some of the guys, what was happening with these women's spirits is there's a feeling you don't like to feel of not understanding things properly some of the guys and so and so what happens is the women these women spirits kick in then as well so for yourself Graham that was happening for yourself these women spirits were kicking in influencing you with some of your questions that you were asking and um, if so what we want to do is just know that's happening and why it's happening what's what's the hook into it and and the the hook is always to do with pleasing angry women from a male's perspective generally but but the, the subtext for, for most of the guys is, I want to understand this emotional work before I do it. And this is a, a problem that many of you are having, 
You're trying to understand it rather than do it and then allow the understanding to come. Do, do you see the difference? When, when you really feel your emotions properly, you won't have to actually understand them before you feel them. You will understand them after you feel them. Do you see the difference? Yeah? And if you're having to understand them before you feel them, then actually it's telling you that what resistances you have to actually dealing with the emotions. You, you follow me? So, so this desire you have to understand the emotion before you get into it is a lot about fear and it's not about actually, it's not helpful for you to be given more information about the emotion. You need to embrace the emotion and the irony is if you embrace the emotion fully you will know almost immediately what it's about. That's the, the irony. Or if not immediately you'll certainly know what it's about as you go start going through it generally. Now, there are, remember, I've reminded you many times that there are emotions you have that you will never know the answer to. What was it about? Because it happened during the time where you weren't cognizant intellectually of what was going around you, but you were still feeling emotions. So, in other words, underneath the age of seven, there are going to be many times of that, right the right and the, the, the lower the age, the more that will occur. So there'll be many times, like if you had an emotion projected at you when you were two, that caused you to cry, and then the parents shut you down with a slap or whatever else, then what will happen is that that will be locked up, but you won't understand what it was about when you release it, and you won't feel, unless the spirit tells you, you won't know what it was ever about. That's the reality. So all of these people who say, oh yes, I had this thing happen the other day and I went through this process and it was all about my birth and coming out the birth canal and all those kind of... And, and my feelings are rubbish, right? My feelings are you, weren't not, you were not intellectually cognizant at that particular time to know what the emotion was about. So it is only a spirit telling you what it was about and there's a potentiality that it's actually the spirit's actual emotion rather than your own in those circumstances. Do you understand? The reality is there'll be many emotions you feel that you will not know anything about. And the key is to not try to know. Just allow the experience fully and embrace the experience fully. And if you do that, you'll find you'll process your emotions much more rapidly and without resistance. The resistance comes from, oh, I want to know what this is about, now I start judging it, now I start condemning it if it's something I don't agree with and so forth and before we know it, we're way, way away from feeling the actual emotion. Alright, well, let's look at the, the homework. So, um, rather than read the actual channeling, because I'm assuming that all of you have read the actual channeling, or most of you who received the channeling would have read it, now, it was from Nina. Nina said that she's happy for me to use this as an example. So, so thank you to Nina for her openness with that. What did you feel about the channeling itself? What was your general feelings? And be honest about them, rather than trying to guess what I'm going to say to you. Um, I sort of um, read it twice. Cause, yep. And the first time I read it, I got a very different response to the second time I read it, like different feeling about it. All right, so first time you read it, what was your general feeling? The general feeling was, um, um, as I was reading through it, it had content and words that appeared to be in line with something a celestial spirit may say. Okay. But um, in the end, it became quite confusing, like some of the ways that the, the words were used in the sentence. Yeah. And then, um, and then it... Um, Yeah, it more felt like um, the first time I read it, I was actually thinking then maybe it was going through different channels and the, the, um, ch the beginning channeling was taken through so many different filters that it might have been confused right. as written down. Right. That okay. was the first time. Yeah. Second time, what did you feel then? Um, the second time I felt that um, it was actually quite an unloving... Um, me, uh, I can't even think of the word now. Um, channeling, basically. Yeah. Not from the channeler themselves, but what was being um, given to them in the, in the form of the um, particular words in sentences that were used. Um, yep. I felt um, there was a few instances where they were saying that some um, your actions aren't loving enough, like sentence um, words like those were saying that yep. um, the spirits um, felt like they were actually 
Um, so listening to the, the path and sort of getting a bit of an understanding intellectually, but yeah. it seemed that they were um, a little bit frustrated um, and disappointed with the urgency that everyone might be displaying as because what they're seeing is something a little bit different to what we see. So, Tim, could you feel the actual spirits themselves when you read the channel? Yeah, it felt like feel? it was a groove. Yeah. Um, in the beginning, it felt like it was a woman talking. Yeah. Um, and in the end, when they were talking, um, reflecting towards you, it seemed like it was more of a male spirit right. who seemed to be in a bit more of a loving place and had a bit more excitement about the path as opposed to wanting to direct you in a particular way. Right. So, um, now I won't sort of comment about these things yet. I'm just, I'm just gathering your comments. Okay. So that, that's good. Thanks, thanks Tim. Um, can we go across to Joy and then we'll work our way across. Um, I, I don't know whether this is coming from my own injury as a judgment mm -hmm. because I, I feel if, I, if, it was, if it was me channeling, I'd feel um, that it was condescending to you and Mary. Um, given my condition, so I don't know whether that's my judgement, but I just felt it was condescending yeah. in a lot of the information, both to you and Mary. I felt there was some truth maybe in the first part about us all being to AJ Belide. All right, now that's again an analysis of the words. What about the feelings you were feeling from the spirit? Could, could you feel the spirits themselves? I just can't get past this feeling like I've felt about it many times over the last week and I just keep coming, it just feels condescending. I just don't seem to be able to get past that. Okay, yep. So at this point, it's hard to, you just feel there's, a, there's an attitude of condescension, condescension. But, but, but you're not sure who the spirit is that's, no. that's, that's doing the channeling. Yep, that's fine. Um, can we come across to Rochelle over there? Sorry, Rochelle. You might want to just, if you're happy to stand. It's just, we want to try to get some of the audience comments, that's all. And the boom mic's the only way to do that. So. Um, I had the same feelings too, but it was a... I feel like the, it was the angry women spirits that were being quite condescending and trying to segregate Mary. And like there was the comments about um, that you're safe to feel your emotions in front of a small group, like why can't you? Yeah. But it was this real, yeah, it was really the, 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 the judgments are, yeah, they want to segregate you, you two from the group. So, and just yeah. that same feeling of wanting to disband and everything and, um, yeah. Just okay, so you felt it was off, you, and the, yeah. the, the actual uh, spirits that you felt were? They felt like the angry, the women. The what kind of condition did they feel in, Rochelle? Dark. Dark. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Murky, like it was, yeah, murky. Okay, yeah. Um, who else was over here? Uh, Diana? You might want to stand up too, Diana, just so you can get the mic here in you. I felt that they were these um, very malevolent women spirits that want to rule the world really yeah and um, there was you know as the others have said a lot of condescension and yeah. and an attempt to um, manipulate desires and fears and use all the words and the terminology yeah um, and pretend to be loving yeah and I felt that they were um, trying to uh, divide you and Mary as well manipulate yeah. Mary and try and like build her up um, trying to work on her, her feelings, her deep, like, um, feelings about herself, of lack of self-worth stuff, mm -hmm. really, like, try to make her feel like she was in a better place than she was yep. because of her avoidance to feel into a pain or that sort of manipulation. Mm -hmm. And then that attempt to um, belittle you. Um, and they felt like there was a whole lot of hate behind that mm -hmm. um, and just yeah just a desire to crush yeah. Yeah. okay anyone else like to come in um, if we come across to Elaine over here and then Rick you might have to just stand up behind the uh, thing. I just felt Thanks, right Lena. from the start that they were trying to confuse Nina and sort of get her excited and build up that she was doing something really good. Yeah. However, there were some truths in it that we have expectations from you guys that to fix our stuff and when you're fixed that'll make it easier for us. Yeah. But at the same time it was like if if we pander a bit to you and or, and say like take time out to do your own emotions, that yeah. that will keep you busy and yeah. we'll just all peter away. 
Yeah. Like, we'll, we'll just get sick of waiting on you to come back to present to us, and we'll just go on our way somewhere else and get distracted into another whatever. Yeah. Um, they felt very new age. They felt... Yeah. Definitely women, but quite quite new age, but interested. New age, but interested in the divine truth. Yeah, yeah. like, oh, okay. maybe... Maybe this is, but but mainly that they didn't really want, and because it was through a woman, they didn't really want us women really listening, and definitely some division, trying to yep. make yourself and Mary so busy with your own emotions that you may not even have time for each other. Yep. Okay. And certainly so busy that you won't be teaching us further, and we'll just go off, and then the whole thing will fall okay. apart. But yeah. really quite low, but pretending to be very knowledgeable and very nice. Okay. All right. Rick, you want to, if you can just, yeah, spin that would be good. Um, yeah, I just felt it was probably pretty attacking on you and pretty condescending towards you. Yeah. And um, you yeah, felt it was, well, I felt there was a lot of truth in it. Um, but yeah, it was sort of, there was a bit of an intent there that was. So you felt there was a lot of truth in it? I felt there was yeah. quite a bit of truth in it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I, yeah, and I felt similar, actually, it was sort of more building Mary up and sort of, much more attacking on you. Yeah. Okay. Could be just my injuries. No, no, that's no, okay. Okay. Would you like to know what's actually happening? <laughs> okay. Well, um, the the first thing is that it, the the spirits were not building Mary up. They were not building Mary up. In fact, the the main point of their attack was Mary. And uh, I'll illustrate to you how that's the case in a minute. Um. And the spirits could read Mary, some of Mary's emotions and, found, and, and they're focusing on her weaknesses emotionally. When I say weaknesses, one of the emotions that she has is that she's not good enough and they were very, very much concentrating on those particular emotions. Secondly, they had no interest in the divine love path at all. They're, they're the darkest women spirits in the spirit world who were channeling. When I say the darkest, we're talking about women's, women who murder people. Like, they've, I've talked to them plenty of times before, and they murder people, they cause mothers to murder their children, they, they, they do all sorts of things with men, they cause women to attack men as much as possible, they are trying to separate every single family on the planet and have the woman dominate in every single relationship. That's these, these women. Right. So um, they are very, very nasty group of women. Now, when I say nasty, please don't. Uh, I'm saying they are vicious and quite evil. However, I can still love them. <laughs> Does that make sense? So we need to understand that we need to have some compassion for them as well, because obviously they all have come from a certain background, right? And um, the reality is also that there are a number of goals that they were trying to achieve through the channeling. One of the goals they were trying to achieve was to actually have more and more people channeling them directly and, and not questioning the channelings with these spirits. They want to have actual control of this group in particular. So they want control of all of you. They want control of every medium who's currently channeling anything on the divine love path. Right? That's their goal, their underlying goal. And there's a, a number of different ways that they uh, can, uh, are focusing on achieving that. And by the way, they have been quite successful with many of you up to this point. Right? Many of you have had feelings of anger or rage towards myself or Mary at different times. And these spirits have been involved in those feelings every single time. Does that make sense? So these spirits are quite, quite uh, nasty spirits. Now, now, the issue firstly for the medium is what does the medium, why can't the medium feel the spirit? See, now, all of you are still struggling to feel the spirits that are with you. Does that make sense? And it's very important to be able to be sensitive enough to feel the spirits that are with you. But the only way you're going to be sensitive enough to feel the spirits with you is to be sensitive enough to feel your own emotions. Mm -hmm. 
But when I say sensitive enough to feel your own emotions, I mean some of these kind of emotions. Here's Daddy, and for many of you, your dad has been quite attacking and quite condescending and, and so forth to you. Now, unfortunately, many of you have a viewpoint of your dad that is very different to reality. In other words, you think daddy loved you and cared about you and, or, or, or other things like that. Or you think daddy was the violent one in the family and so forth. There's, there's often polarised opinions. And here's your mummy. Right? And many of you have feelings about your mum as well that are very, very um, distorted. Uh, the kind of feelings are, for example, oh yeah, me and mum get along fine, or me and mum haven't had too much trouble, mum never belted me or anything like that, she seemed to try hard with me and so <laughs> forth. And there's all these different emotions in play where you're already falsifying to yourself how you were treated. Do you understand? In other words, you're not allowing yourself to feel the full effect of what happened as a child inside of yourself. And instead, you reason with yourself. You go, oh, it wasn't that bad, or it wasn't this, or it wasn't that. Or, you, know, you, you, you come up with all this argumentation or intellectual arguments about all sorts of things about a childhood. Now, of course, if mummy is actually on the so-called divine love path, it even gets worse. Right? Because now mummy's telling you, oh, she wasn't that bad either, <laughs> because she's aware of all these emotions and so forth. And if daddy's on the divine love path, then he does a very similar thing often. Often parents are not owning their emotions very well. Even right now on the path, many of you who've even heard these things about children for many, many years are still not owning how you've damaged your own children very well. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that is getting projected at the child or the person who's trying to progress. Now, because of these injuries with daddy and mummy, and your belief system, so what we've got to do is look at our belief systems regarding how it really was with our relationship with both of our parents, how it really was. Now, the reality is, a person cannot smack you at all and yet have huge amounts of violent intentions towards you. That's the reality. A person can have feelings of jealousy towards their children. And a feeling of jealousy can create terrible emotions in the child. So you imagine if you were a girl, for example, you're born, and the instant you're born, the father starts to, to take you know, more interest in the girl. The mother might have emotions of jealousy about other women, and instantly she feels jealous of her own daughter and the time that the daughter is taking away from the relationship, or from her, from his, his attention of her. Now, as soon as that happens, she would be projecting anger at her own daughter right from a very, very young age. She may never admit to it her entire life. But, as a child, you will feel it that entire time. But you tell yourself, well, mum never harmed me, and mum seemed to get along, we seemed to get along fine, but this sometimes feels something a bit off, but don't know what that is, really. And so we don't really have a, have a good concept inside of ourselves of how much damage was done with that projection of emotion. Does that make sense? Now, because we accept it from our parents, and their projections of emotions become something that's very real to us, we now will have a very high tendency to accept it from very similar-minded spirits. Does that make sense? So, for example, if, my, if I grew up with a jealous mum, I, I don't realise it, I've never really felt close to her, but I've never really felt like she was bad either or anything like that, but I grew up with a jealous mum, I am going to attract a heap of very jealous spirits in my interactions throughout my life. And they are going to try to punish me or harm me in some way due to this attraction. But because I am not, I've desensitised to it, I won't even know what's happening. Does that make sense to everyone? Elizabeth? We can just go to the next one. Yeah. Then my attraction to my women who are jealous. And angry. You, will certainly, you will certainly attract women projecting jealousy at you. 
I agree, but, but you, you might just even think that that's normal too. Does that make sense? Because you're so detuned from it with your own mother, you now think all of that kind of treatment, that's how women normally are. And you just go, and it, you start telling yourself things like, oh, yeah, in my life I've just gotten along with men better, that's all. Not understanding that there's very, very big reasons why you've gotten along with men better than, got, than how you've gotten along with women. Does that make sense? Um, over the last few days, I've actually just discovered what did happen in my childhood. Yep. So I'm really conscious of what happened with my father and my mother. Yep. And so I can see it all. Um, but I just feel numb. I just, um... Well, the pain of the emotions, this is the, this is the problem with the intellect. The pain of our emotions is often so great that our intellect is always trying to shut down our feeling of those emotions. So what we often go initially into when we start realising how it must have been when we were a child or how it's felt when we were a child is we often go into numbness and the numb feeling is actually a, an, addict, it's an addiction of wanting to be numb so that you don't have to feel the pain. Yeah. Does that make sense? Now, most of us have done a lot of things to avoid pain. Like we, we've told ourselves different stories. We've told ourselves even the parent story. So we actually tell ourselves, oh yeah, but mum was this and dad was that. And we tell the story that our parents have told us all of their lives to ourselves, even to prevent our own pain. But the reality is the pain is still within. And what I'm getting at is not so much the emotional side of it, but what I'm getting at is that if we just replace mum and dad with spirits with very similar beliefs, that's the kind of spirits we're going to attract. And we're not even going to know it because we have already numbed ourselves to feeling the pain of it through our relationship with our parents. Does everyone get that? We've numbed ourselves in the relationship with our parents to actually feeling the full extent of what's coming at us. And so therefore, we're not conscious of what's coming at us from the spirit world. That's one of the main problems that we have. So, so for, for Nina, um, she is not conscious of how um, she wasn't conscious, I should say, we've, we've talked to her about it obviously at length, she wasn't conscious about the condition of these women's spirits that were talking to her. She was just hearing their words and thinking, oh, these are all loving words, so this must be fine. They must be in good condition. This is fantastic on channeling. And up until then, what had been happening in Greece is she, she, she arrived there about a week before us and she'd been talking to very many different people and channeling for them, the same spirits, by the way, channeling for them, you know, what their emotional condition is and so forth. Right? And everyone was really wrapped because it all felt accurate, you know, the emotional condition all felt accurate to them. And so they felt, oh, this is really wonderful, Nina's going really good and, and we're getting all this information from her and it's wonderful. So... And then that connected with some emotions in Nina as well, where everyone was starting to go, wow, Nina's in good condition. And so she's starting to feel some glory-based emotions and so forth as well, so <coughs> wanting, uh, having, enjoying that attention, which actually is one of her emotions with regard to her mum in particular. And, and so because she's not sensitive to the actual emotions that her mum has been projecting at her all of her life, she now is completely open to a spirit projecting those kind of same kind of emotions without actually questioning what's going on here. Does that make sense? And so the reality is, Nina, when she did the channeling, was very, very happy with it. And she felt really confident that it was going to help myself and Mary and so forth. Now, the interesting thing is when myself and Mary sat down to read it, we just got a barrage of hate from these spirits just in the process of sitting down to read it. Just a barrage of hate. These spirits have, have dedicated their life, they've told me this, they've dedicated their life to murdering me and harming Mary in the process if they possibly can and that's what they're going to achieve at some point. That's what they've said to me, right? And... There's all this hatred that comes out of them when they deal with me directly. When they deal with other people, they are constantly trying to seduce you. Remember I gave the talk about bribery and blackmail. Remember that? 
Well, what these spirits are trying to do is to bribe you into a condition of accepting what their words and therefore accepting their guidance. That's what they are attempting to do. And the way they do that is like anybody bribes you, with a sweetener. Now, the sweetener will be whatever you have an emotional injury to need. So if the sweetener is, I want to look good on the divine love path, then they'll help you look good on the divine love path. If the sweetener is, I want to know about everyone else's emotions, because that way I have control, then they'll tell you everything about everyone else's emotions. And you think, oh, oh yeah, I've got a celestial spirit with me who knows everyone's emotions. Isn't it wonderful? And I can help them with that. If the sweetener is that you want to feel powerful and in control and you want to be a powerful woman but you're really brought to men, then the sweet, that sweetener will be the sweetener they give to you. It'll be whatever the emotional injury is that you have that's dominant that allows the connection. And then, if you deny the sweetener, so in other words, you realise, well, I think I'm being sweet-talked here, right? The instant you are, they will then switch from the bribery into the blackmail. And you will have to put up with the barrages of rage and hatred from those spirits in that place. Now for the majority of you, you haven't even begun to feel that yet. Because you're still in the bribe, you're still in the bribe phase. And to be frank, for the majority of you, you are very afraid to begin the process of no longer responding to the bribe. You think about it, in your own day-to-day -day life with your own parents, many of you are still very afraid to do that. And this is why the same fear exists with the spirits. Many of you are yet to address the unloving behaviour of your mother, for example, directly with her. You're yet to enter that as a conversation, even. You, you try to process it all without telling her. Right? Many of you. Now, in that process, that's demonstrating the same... You're afraid of what's going to come at you if you do address the issues with them. So, um, we just wait for the mic to come over as a point. Yeah. What if your mother doesn't want to hear it, like just says, no, I don't want to hear it, and just tries to shut you down each time and try and tell them the truth? Um, then what you do is you act in harmony with the truth with every interaction with her, which is one thing that most people here are still not doing. Mm -hmm. So Does that make sense? So... So in other words, you don't have to tell her anything. Yeah. You need to act in harmony with the truth that you feel in the interaction. That's the thing that's going to trigger no matter whether she wants to hear it or not. Mm. Right? The majority of us don't want to do that. We want to talk to her without actually acting in harmony with what we can feel from her. Do, do you understand the difference? Like, for example, if an angry woman comes in the door here and sits down in the audience and then starts getting angry in the audience, most of you would be annoyed with her perhaps, but you, none of you would probably tell her at this point to leave. Why is that? Because you're afraid of what she'll do with that. Does that make sense? So the reality is, this is the same interaction happening with the spirits. When I'm not going to address the woman's issues, then, uh, and the woman happens to be a spirit, then she's still going to be able to stay around me. Totally. If I don't heal this emotion inside of me where I'm accepting her rage, then she will be able to stay around with me, projecting at me her rage constantly. And if there's any openings in my spirit body, she'll be able to affect me physically. Right? I was down at uh, Armadale a couple of weeks ago, and we talked to a group of spirits, there were about two million spirits who came who were part of this group. There's, there's six billion of these spirits, by the way. Who, six billion women spirits in the spirit world who are in this state, women spirits. Anyway, two million of them came to me with one of their leaders. And this leader had been with me, with me for 15, 15 years trying to attack my body to kill me. And she admitted that right at the outset, right at the beginning of the channeling. She admitted that, yeah, that she's been trying to attack me for this amount of time. Anyway, I discussed things with her and so forth, and, and we finished up actually having a bit of a shift with her, like she actually stopped doing this. But the women spirits who were controlling her, the darker women spirits who were controlling her, they then came and attacked me overnight. And I 
I vomited for the next four days because of my own openness in my spirit body to a woman's attack. Does that make sense? And every single time we have gone down to Armadale at this point, myself and Mary, either Mary or myself has come back vomiting. So we sort of dread our visits to Armadale to a degree. <laughs> you know, like, um, but, but it's all to do with this openness to, spirit, to these women's spirit attack because they have very fixed ideas of what they want to have happening down there and they constantly attack us as a result. Now, all we need to do is patch up the opening. In other words, go into the grief of being attacked by women, and which is what I did over the last few weeks in particular, I've been doing that, and I can feel my tummy getting better as a result. But it's interesting, my law of attraction. My law of attraction, I often get on the end of the phone and another nasty woman abusing me on the end of the phone. Huh? I hang up the phone so that I don't, I don't engage it with them. I hang up the phone and say, no, you're just being angry with me now. I've got to go. Hang up the phone and the women's spirits with her just attack me again. And quite often it feels like lately just I'm getting punched in the stomach now. Right? That's what it feels like rather than having the vomit or whatever. So in other words, it's slowly repairing. I'm slowly repairing the problem, but there's still more work to be done. Now, the reality is, for the majority of you, you haven't even begun this work yet because you're not getting attacked by them. And that's proof you haven't started yet because the reality is you, you will get attacked by them as soon as you stop accepting the bribery. And if you just wait for the mic. It's just coming. Um, so, um, so if there's these law of attractions that come to you that seem favourable but strangely undeserving, is that when you kind of go, wait a minute, I'm being set up here for something? A lot of times we are being, yes. Yeah. The, reality, the reality is that when you're on the divine love path, there are not very many spirits in dark condition that want you to be on it. Yeah. And so most of those spirits will begin attacking you quite strongly. Now, the reality is for many of you, you're yet to experience this attack. And the reason why you're yet to experience the attack is you go along with the attack. You, you, you're already in the bribery phase with them, and so you're not going to get attacked while you're in the bribery phase. They sweeten it up for you, and you go, oh, my Lord, attraction's really good, and things are going smooth, isn't this wonderful? And, and, and all of those kind of things happen. And, uh, and then we start becoming quite... Uh, desensitized to what's really going on in terms of the condition of the spirits surrounding us as a result. Right, so I mean, basically, if you get this law of attraction on an issue that you know you haven't dealt with, that's a pretty good sign you're, you're being set up. Exactly. Right? So if you get a wonderful law of attraction about money, but you know you've still got fears about money, yeah. then you go, hmm, I'm just getting, like, something's going on here, right? If, I, if you've got a terrible law of attraction with relationship with the opposite sex, but for some reason this particular relationship seems to be going real sweet, and you know you haven't dealt with the mum issues yet, then you go, hmm, something's going on here. Like, what's happening here? And, uh, and very frequently, and in fact, I would put to you almost the majority of the time, there's this bribery process going on in those, in those times. The reality is... As soon as you get out of the bribery, the blackmail begins pretty much immediately, and that's pretty intensely negative. Now, I'm not saying that all of your positive experiences are because of bribery. What I'm saying is the positive experiences will occur from your own soul when you have healed the causal emotion inside of your soul. If, they're not, if you're not healing the causal emotion inside of your soul, but you're still having the positive experience then there's definitely bribery occurring. Does everyone get that? Yep. No? I've been um, having some real contrasting law of attraction where at work the people that aren't quite intellectually, they're, I don't know, like people with dementia or, or things like that, yep. they will like physically attack me or actually threaten to hit me or really put me down yet yeah. on the other hand I've got a lot of attraction where I'm feeling a lot closer to men and men are actually starting to come into my life yeah. and I'm just sort of like I'm quite are some of the men, men who have dementia attacking you or is it just women or what, what, what gender 
um, men. men. All, all the men. Yeah. That so this is an indication the that you're being bribed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The, the, reality, the reality is the patients with dementia are going to be more responsive to your soul than to their own intellectual promptings. And so therefore they, are, they will give you a far better a accurate record as to your own condition than a person who is, just, who is quite intellectual and, and doesn't have the problems of dementia and those kind of problems. The reality is also that children will give you a far better feedback than an adult will because the adult can kick in their mind, right? Whereas the child will, will just act out its unhealed emotion or the parent's unhealed emotion towards you. So the parent could be going, sitting there going, oh, you're wonderful, I love you, and, rah, rah, rah. and the child's there beat, ha hammering you, like punching you. That's the parent's real emotion. Like, so the parent might have a nice face on it, but the reality is the parent's real emotion is being reflected by the child. The other thing that's always good to check with is, is animals. Animals will always respond to the real condition. Does that make sense? So that, that, that's something that will also happen. Now, animals can be affected by spirits. So if you find that uh, you haven't, again, dealt with an emotion and all of a sudden an animal is coming up to you and everything and you feel, oh, isn't this wonderful and so forth, then there's a pretty high likelihood that a spirit is motivating that connection rather than your own soul. So this is where we need to be sensitive to what's really going on. Make sense? Yep. You like me? If your parents are in the spirit world, and I yep. have two mothers in the spirit world. Both in the spirit world, yeah. And my mother from yep. when I was very young with both. Yep. Um, and you said to act in harmony with truth in every interaction. So if I'm not able to be certain or I can't speak to them, or should I make time to speak to them, or just go with healing the causal? Um, I would always engage anyone who possible who can help you confront an emotion within yourself, whether they're alive on earth or, or past. So actually, actively seek in, yeah. to speak to them both in the spirit world. And the only time I would not is if the person on earth or in the spirit world just abuses you as a result of it. Does that make sense? That's the only time I would not. So, so, for example, if you go to speak to your dad and he's on earth and you start talking to him and he just abuses you and says you're an idiot, blah, 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 then, then it's pointless trying to engage him with, the, you know, all you're doing is inviting abuse. And also, I would no longer see him again. That's the thing that most of us are avoiding. You see, what most of you are doing is you try to have the chat, it doesn't work out so well, and then what you do is you ignore the emotion and you sacrifice yourself in the next interaction. In other words, you compromise the truth from then on. That's still in the bribery phase. Right? When you stop compromising the truth from then on, it becomes very confronting for everyone around you. And automatically you're out of the bribery phase and into the blackmail phase generally where they just project anger and rage and all these other emotions at you for, doing, for, for, bringing, for acting in a harmony with how you feel. So if your mother or father, for example, has generally attacked you during your life, you verbally try to do it and they say, no, I haven't been like that at all, I don't agree with you, rah, rah, rah. And you go, okay, and you walk away and you have a bit of a cry about it and you're just disappointed. But many times you don't want to give up your addiction and your addiction is living on hope that she's going to change. So what you do is you continue to engage her. Right? But the reality is, she's just demonstrated not only is she not sorry for how she treated you, she's still continuing to treat you exactly the same. Why would you engage her if you had any self-esteem? Well, especially in the spirit world, because I felt, oh, poor them, they've passed away. Yep. You know? Um, and uh, why poor them? Yeah, but Elaine? that's sort of what... My yeah. history has been. Yeah. With my foster mother, I did feel resentment because my foster father's idea to yeah. rear me, not hers. Yeah. Um, and he took a lot of responsibility for that. Yeah. He beautifully did so. Yeah. But I certainly, because she was unwell as well. So, yeah. yeah. And then, so then I'm feeling, oh, poor Bessie, I won't, you know. Yeah. And, and she wasn't it, nasty to me, but resentment, I could feel it. Now I reflect. Well, resentment is nasty. Yeah. But not verbally resenting. No, no, yeah. no, forget the verbally. Yeah, yeah, but that's what I'm now <laughs> It is nasty, is this is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, it's even worse, actually. It, it, it is, it is. Yeah. It's an emotion that actually damages your soul because you're open to it. What, one thing that I've talked about with a number of people already, and we haven't had a chance to talk about it in a group yet, 
is that this is how we are with our parent. If you can just imagine for a moment that your soul is like a bottle, right? Whoops, not a very good one. It's like a bottle, right? That's your soul. Your parents have been pouring into your soul their false beliefs. And not just their false general beliefs, their false beliefs about you. And I've been pouring that, and this applies to every parent, by the way, whether you're on the phone, divine love path or not, you've done this to your own children. You're pouring in these false beliefs and very, very harsh emotions, generally, into the soul of your child. So this is the child's soul. And it's filled up now with all of this crap, which is the projections of our parents over years and years and years and years of time. Right? Now, this bottle has a lid, a cork, let's say. Right? There it is there. And the fact is, for the majority of you, you still have it off when it comes to your parents. In other words, you're not stopping them from continuing to project at you. You are still being open to the projection no matter whether in the spirit world or not, you're still open to the projection. Because you have what's, what I would classify as an addiction based on hope. You hope that at some point in the future they'll realise all of these negative things that they've done to you. And they'll have an epiphany. And they will all of a sudden feel totally repentant for their actions. And they'll come to you with a bleeding heart and say how sorry they are. And all of a sudden, you'll get the love you never got. That's what we believe. The reality is, the chances of it happening with your parent are the worst possible chances of it happening with anyone. I'm, I'm, I'm being honest. Because the reality is, they put this crap there. So this heap of crap in your soul, they put there. The chances of them wanting to fix it without huge problems for them doing it are very, very remote. Do you understand? Now, any parent who does that, I think are wonderful parents. Any parent who's totally willing to engage this process of realising the crap they've put into their child, that parent, I feel, is just a wonderful parent. The reality is the likelihood of it happening, even with your parents on the divine love path, is highly remote. The reason why is they're going to have to come face to face with all of the crap they put inside of you, one by one inside of themselves. And they have huge beliefs invested in this. They even have you invested in it. The chances of, it, of them doing it before you do are very, very remote. Do you understand? Now, because of your openness, the cork, let's say, is open to still receiving this from them. Right? You can actually put a cork on the lid if you wish. You, you, can, you can stop the reception of those emotions from your parents. The, the majority of you don't want to. And do you know why you don't want to? Because then you'll lose all hope. You, then you'll be face to face with the grief that you'll never get this love that you wanted from them. Do you understand? That's what will happen inside of you. Now, the reality is, there's two primary emotions when we as a child do not feel loved emotionally. The two primary emotions are fear coming from our parents or anger coming from our parents. Now, most emotions are based around those couple of emotions in terms of unloving emotions. So, so what happens is, if I'm a child, let's say I'm two years of age, my mother's holding me in her arms, right? And all of a sudden, she's in a lift, and all of a sudden the lift drops all of a sudden. And some of her fear about heights automatically pops up, right? She's automatically afraid. In that moment, your soul is no longer receiving love. And it's linked to the event, the height and dropping. Now, what will happen is you will have a fear of heights as a result into you, which is not really a fear of heights. It's the fear of the withdrawal of your mother's love when she's afraid of heights. 
you understand? And this emotion will enter you in that moment. And from that moment on, you'll be afraid of heights, probably. Or you'll be afraid of that sensation of dropping. You know, when you go over a hill and you have that sense of, oh, you go, you know, there's a sensation. Because it's a reminder that every time it happened to you, when as a child your mum withdrew her love, and her, with, auto, her withdrawal of love was automatic, because any time a person goes into fear, they are automatically withdrawing love. Do, do you get that? Yeah? Do you have questions about that? Um, I just wait for the mic. Isn't it uh, basically unrealistic to ever expect that love from our parents because they don't have the capacity to love on that level anyway? And what we're asking for is really the love, for the most part, that only God could give us, that we're ideal. I agree. However, um, this is one story that we tell ourselves to avoid a lot of emotion. Do you understand? Yeah. So in other words, one story we've told ourselves is like, mum and dad are not capable of loving me anyway. Why should I? I shouldn't expect love from them. But the reality is, the child felt hurt every time love was withdrawn, and this hurt is inside of you now. Whether you intellectualise it away by explaining mum and dad's incapacity now or not is immaterial. The emotion will be present until you release it. Yeah, I'm just talking about the hope, though. Uh, I agree, but even the hopeless feeling is an emotion, you see? And when you intellectualise it, you're not feeling it. When you're intellectualised, the reality is most of you have hope here that your mum and dad will change. And the reality is that for many of you, it may never occur, or it may occur well and truly after you've changed. Right? Might, might be hundreds of years after you've changed, even. Right? And, and that's the reality of their emotion. But every time I don't feel the hopeless feeling, I am still going to keep this hope inside of me. In other words, I'm going to be open to receiving their projection at me as a result. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because this is what we do with the spirits. Any spirit who is like my mum, I'll be totally open to receiving their projection. So if my mum was like this, let's say my mum was really nice and kind most of the time, but, but, whenever I didn't do what she wanted, she would lecture me. She would just sit me down and lecture, 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 lecture. And by the end of it, I felt so lectured that I just felt like I had to do what she wanted. Or, let's say my mum was a, a different type of mum where um, she was fine with me most of the time. But every time she was afraid, she would just get angry with me every single time she was afraid. And I, I would just get a barrage of anger from my mum. The rest of the time she was fine, but I'd get a barrage of anger from my mum. Now, if that's the case, and I've still got my lid open of hope with my mother, the reality is that the spirits who are exactly like that with me will treat me exactly the same. Do, do you get that? They will treat you exactly the same. So, so they'll be nice and kind, nice and kind, until you do something wrong in their eyes, and then all of a sudden, you know, if it was the first case, They'd just give you, sit you down with the lectures so in your ear. And like you'll feel all this pressure and you wonder, and if you can't even hear them, you'll still feel pressured, you know what I mean? You feel like, oh, what's going on? Like it just feels like I shut down, I'm shut down, like can't express myself and just feel like I don't know what's happening. And that will be the same kind of pressure that you got as a child. Or if it's one of these ones that got into a rage, then you'll just feel like, wow, this is like, Terrible feeling coming from somewhere, you know, you don't even know necessarily where it is, but you'll definitely feel it because your lid is open. Your lid is open to the feeling. And these harsh emotions, like, you're no good when you make me afraid. You're no good, you know, like, these are the times when they withdrew love. It's the withdrawal of love that causes pain. You get that from your childhood? The withdrawal of love is the source of all of your pain. The two times when generally it occurred was when your parent, one or both, was either afraid or angry. Whenever they were afraid, they withdrew love. Whenever they were angry, they withdrew love. In fact, the anger is even worse because it's, the fear comes along with it underneath, but the rage is also this terrible feeling of resentment and cruelty coming along with it. And of course, that's an additional effect. The reality is that it's not, only, not only now is the withdrawal of love happening, but there is an active hatred of you in that moment. Right? And almost all children have experienced it at some point because of the different feelings that our parents have. 
And so when our parents withdraw fear and anger, or withdraw love through those processes, we, we now become open to that in the process. And we've, we've got our lid off with our parents. In other words, if we allow our parents to continue to um, dump these unhealed emotions on us, they will continue doing it for the rest of their life and probably the rest of their life in the spirit world until they have some kind of realisation that they shouldn't be doing it. That's the reality. Um, yes, well, I am not quite sure where I am in the process. My parents are in the spirit world. And Natalie, in the shed one day a few weeks ago, channeled that they might be in a willing place. I'm not quite sure if, yep. if you could give me... Well, a lot of spirits, when they pass into the spirit world, do become more willing. So, so, so there is a chance that your parents, if they've passed, have become more willing. However, for many of you, that's not the case with past parents. Right? But there is a chance that they have become more willing. The key is to still engage the process. Now, there are a lot of you who have parents that have passed that have discovered the divine love path through your discovery of it. And as some of those parents have actually embraced it, and those parents have actually dealt with some of their emotions, and they will assist you greatly to get into some of your emotions if you allow the process to continue. However, I'm saying to you, the majority of them are not like that. And also, these angry women spirits who are affecting your group are not like that. They are completely opposite to that. And if your lid is open to receiving this, then, of course, you're going to receive it. So, so if, if your feeling is, if your feeling is, the reason why my mum didn't love me was there was something wrong with me. Now, let's face it, a fair few of us have got that emotion, right? There, there's something wrong with me, that's why mum didn't love me. Now, that enables now our parents to continue saying that to us. In other words, our parents, if they're on earth or in the spirit world, will go, yeah, no, it wasn't my fault I couldn't love you, it's your fault, you know? And also, the spirits who are nasty now have an avenue to punish you with. They have an avenue for pushing you into self-punishment. Many of you are going into self-punishment still, right? This is why. Because the spirits, you have an opening to being told that you are to blame. And so, when you feel you are to blame, and you're not fully embracing the emotion, you're just trying to avoid that, a spirit comes along and says, you're going to blame, you're going to blame, you're terrible. And then you start getting angry with yourself. Right? Blaming yourself for the fact that you're not progressing or things are not getting better or whatever. Now you're fully engaged in their punishment of you. And you're just going along with the process. Right? And this is what these spirits will do when they get out of the bribery phase with you and move into the blackmail punishment <coughs> phase with you. That's what they will do. This is what you've got to look forward to. Right? Now, what I want to do is get back to the point of hand, though, because I don't want to spend this session as discussing your emotions aside from how that reflects to mediumship. Does that make sense? Yeah? Yesterday, I allowed far too much discussion about emotion, and today I'm not going to allow it. Is that okay? Aside from how it affects your mediumship. So, so here we have these false beliefs and harsh emotions that we're now open to. We're so open to it that we don't even notice when somebody's doing it. That's how open we are. We don't even notice that they're doing it. We, we even think, oh, they seem to be a nice person. <laughs> and yet there's this coming at you. But you don't notice it because you're so detuned because you've dis become desensitised after years and years of desensitisation by your parents. Does everyone get that? Years and years of desensitisation now makes you totally desensitised even noticing. So you don't even know when you're getting threatened anymore. You just automatically embrace the threat. Huh? And you're not sensitive to the fact that you're being threatened in order to manipulate you or control you. And then to make it worse, if one of your emotions happens to be in line with the spirit's emotions about something, you will actually start believing that it's your own feelings that are, being, that are, that are happening here. So, for example, these women's spirits hate men. Like, their feeling about men is they would, they would like to test tube all of the sperm 
and get rid of all men. That's their actual feelings about men. Right? Now, that means that if I have an emotion of rage towards a male and I'm a female, they are going to just have a very big opening to get in and influence me in that place. And many of you are processing rage, you think, but you're not processing rage because the reality is rage is the avoidance of fear, right, in the end. You're not processing childhood rage, you know, something that happened when you were a child. Most of the time all that's happening is you're just being influenced by a rageful woman spirit into processing whatever she feels about men because of your openness to it. Do you follow me? And as a result of that, these spirits can do lots of things when they're channeling to you. They can also do lots of things if you're doing healing with another person. They can really hook into that process and, and actually, through you, actually damage the person even more if you have unhealed emotions that are in sympathy with it. So if you're a healer, for example, and you're trying to heal a person, and he's a male who has, who has anger issues, childhood anger issues from being shut down with his mother, and you're trying to encourage... You, you won't probably encourage him even to get into his rage about his mum. You'll say it's fear or grief or something else that he would have no hope of getting into until he gets into the rage. And the reason why you'll say that is because you have a spirit prompting you going, say that to him, say that to him, say that to him. And you feel, no, no, I'm pretty sure it's, I'm pretty sure it's not what he thinks it is. I'm pretty sure that it's you know, fear or something else. Not the thing that he needs to process. Because the woman spirit with you will not want him to process. And this is where if you're a healer or you're doing mediumship, you need to understand far more carefully what's really going on in terms of the interactions around you. Now, to understand them, the only way you can understand them is to become more sensitive emotionally to them. How do you become more sensitive emotionally? By connecting to and releasing your emotions that cause you to not be sensitive and what are the emotions that cause you to not be sensitive? It's all of the desensitisation of your parents. They are the emotions that cause you to not be sensitive. Do you, do you, do you see the relationship? Here you go. Um, do these spirits realise that when we process emotions, we progress? When we experience the emotion, it yes. releases? Yeah, yeah, of course they do. Most, most of these spirits have been watching you now as a group for years. They've been following myself and Mary around all of our lives and anyone we meet, they watch. Anyone we meet. So that, another question pops up. If they see if the person feels they experience the emotion, they progress to a better place, yep. why don't they do the same? Because they don't, they're in a rage. They're in, they're, in, they're in a cruel and vicious rage. They don't want anyone to progress. They want people to get as dark as they are. They have a goal of making you as bad as they are. That's their goal. They like to see your degradation. They don't want to see your improvement. They want to see your degradation. They actually surround many people on earth and cause their souls to degrade very rapidly as a result of the surroundings because of their, of their own desires. They want to degrade every single person in this, in, in this, in this audience. They want to make sure that you do not progress and that in fact, after this experience, you feel worse than you, when you began. And many of you are already on that path, by the way, of even beginning to feel worse than when you began. So that, this is an indication of this influence that they are placing upon you, right? And uh, this is something to be aware of. You go? One more. So their goal would be if we become as dark as they are and we pass into the spirit world, they have control. Exactly. Yep. Yep. And, and at least if we're afraid of them, then they have control of us anyway. But if we're not afraid of them and we even do worse things and we become as dark as them, then they have an additional member to assist them in their endeavour. So that, that's their goal. Their goal is to, to degrade every single person possible who's trying to progress. This is, this is a part of the problems that we're facing. Um, I've been doing a bit of stuff around repenting how I've harmed women. Yep. And I was doing that one day and I could feel all these women spirits were just projecting that, this hatred at me. And I spoke to them and I said, look, you know, I'm trying to you know, fix what I've done. Yep. Um, and if you can sort of lay off, I can... I show you, you know, if you want how things can be better and like men aren't as 
men can be better. Yep. And they just didn't want to borrow it. No, no. They, they didn't even want to see that it was possible to actually... No, what they want to do to, to any man is just destroy him. Yeah. And if destroying him means helping you hold on to those emotions and making you feel even worse about yourself, that's what they will do. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They, they, have no, they will not assist you to process any one of these emotions. Yeah. Uh, even if you're a man, they will not assist you yeah. to make men better towards women. They won't even do that. Yeah, and they're quite open about that. Yeah, yeah, they're quite open about it. Yep. Yep. They have no desire whatsoever. Yep. Is there any prospect of their um, influence diminishing in the future? Uh, the, the only time a spirit's influence diminishes is when you no longer respond to their blackmail. So in other words, you've, you've stopped responding to the bride... So that, that has to stop, start first, right? You need to stop responding to the bride. Then they go into blackmail and threatening and terror, you know, and all these other things, the fear-based responses they go into. And when you stop responding to that at the soul level, not, not in your mind, but emotionally, then they no longer have any other control and there's nothing they can do after that. That's the reality. So I was thinking in terms of you know earth changes and stuff. It's no, the, the, the reality yeah. is, if we do not do it with this emotions now, the reality is going to be that it's going to be worse for us in earth change situations, mm -hmm. because the reality is there will be more anarchy, less law, less controls, more spirit influence than ever before through fear. So the reality is we've got you know unless we deal with these emotions. If, unless we deal with these mum and dad emotions, which are really the cause of it all, um, unless we deal with that, we're basically leaving ourselves totally open to almost total, total control during future events. Yep. Now, it's not a lot of you to get careful now, because now you're going into fear, you see. And fear is the main mechanism they use. This is what blackmail and the bribe's all about, is the fear. Now, when I say going into fear, you're not feeling the fear. You're just going into like feeling terrified that it might happen or what might happen, but you're not actually feeling it. You're not actually feeling your terror. You're, you're ignoring it and going, oh, this sounds terrible, you know, and it feels all threatening and everything. And, and unfortunately, that even makes things worse. That's the reality. Who's not oh, Jen? We go Jen and then. Yes, so I feel like I'm on a roller coaster. Yep. Most women are. <coughs> Most people are. The reality is that almost all persons on the divine love path at the moment are being heavily influenced by spirits, and that is going to feel like a real roller coaster ride. Following um, a discussion that we had, I um, decided that that I was going to stay in my body, which is a pretty big deal for me. Mm -hmm. Staying in my body um, provides its own pain all unto itself. Definitely. It's very good for you. Because you feel the reality of what's going on for yourself. It's horrendous. No, no, it's not horrendous. It's true. <laughs> you see, this is how you look at it compared to how I look. Like, can you imagine how, many, how much pain I have at times with millions of spirits attacking me? Yes, I right? can imagine. And I've had pain all of my life. I had operations when I was two years of age on my bowel, for example, due to these women's spirits. Right? I've nearly died on a lot of different occasions in my life right, due to these things. Yes. But staying in your body is true. It tells you what's really happening. You see, the, the problem that most of us face, Jen, is that we are going out of our body, so therefore not really knowing what's, what's really happening. And the problem when we're out of our body, we think that's safer, but the reality is it's not safer. You're just almost totally under the control of somebody else. Yes. So it's not safe at all. You're under control of their women, their pleasure, not, not your own. Yes. And so it's not safe at all. Yes. So the reality is you, we need to get away from this mentality you have as, oh, it's horrific, and say, no, this is true. This is telling me the truth about how I am, how I feel. Staying in my body is a very important part of that. You follow me? Yes. And, and you will actually be influenced less to do things that are outside of your own will if you stay in your own body. Okay. 
If you go out of your body, then these spirits can influence you to do what they will. And this is why sometimes you finish up doing something, you go, boy, I don't even know why I did that, you know? I know I shouldn't do that, or I know that that's not very loving, and yet I went ahead and did that, you know? And this is because we're a lot of times out of our body because we want to be. And we want to be out of our body to avoid its pain. And we need to embrace its pain, because its pain is telling us everything that we need to cure, everything that we need to heal. So what I experience by coming back into my body and knowing I'm in my body because I'm in so much pain is the voices intensify. Yes. This is their blackmail. They're really, 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 like, very intense. Yep. And they really want control. Yes. And, and there's this tendency within many of us to go, oh, I'm just going give, to give up and give them control. And I'll go out of my body because there's less pain for me. And, you know, in the end we finish up doing things we regret. That's how we do things we regret for our own soul. So in my waking hours, they're constantly, constantly, constantly there. Mm -hmm. And I'm in my mind going, no, 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 no. And feeling my body at the same time. Yeah, good. In my sleep, when I, even when I go to sleep, they're, they're of all different types, mm -hmm. all have stories, mm -hmm. all want my attention. It's a roller coaster, and I'm, you know, like. The key is to deal with your hook into it, then. Remember, I've talked to the group about hooks before, and there's a hook into this, like. And this is what we need to discover through this process. If we stay in our body and we pray about what's going on, we will soon discover why we allow it. And for many of you, you like to have spirits tell you what to do. Because then you don't have to take control of your own life. Is that? Is and this, this is particularly the case for yourself. with me, especially at night, there's just no rest? Yeah. But you, you didn't hear what I just said, though, Jen. That's what happens. Yesterday was the same. Yeah, but you didn't hear what I just said as to the answer. The answer is to deal with these emotions where you don't want to take responsibility for your life. You I want thought... other people to take responsibility for your life. So I you give them an I opening. Have been. But you can't be because they're still controlling you. You see, you see, this is a law of attraction event telling you that the problem still exists. And if the problem still exists, then all we need to do is say, well, whatever we've run up till now, while it may have been helpful, it hasn't helped this particular problem because the problem still exists. And so therefore, I'm yet to discover the true reason why this is occurring. Does that make sense to everyone? So instead of being despondent and going, oh, I'm terrible, it's very, oh, bad, I'm terrible, I haven't worked it all out, and, you know, and all that, which we often do, right? What we need to do instead of, right, okay, I've still got this problem, whatever this problem is. If the problem is being hassled by spirits, I'm still getting this hassle all the time. I know that there's this issue of bribery versus blackmail. So they're blackmailing me at the moment, which means it's good because I'm not in the bribery phase with them at least. So that's a good, good sign that I'm at least getting out of the bribe, accepting their carrot, their sweetness. I'm out of that, but now I'm just getting hammered. Right? Now, let yourself feel the hammering. Let yourself feel it and grieve it, and also pray about what the opening is to why you're so open to being hammered. And as you do that, you will very rapidly discover why you're open to being hammered. And, and if you do that, and if you do it and you think it's one thing and the hammering continues, then you know law of attraction has not changed. So therefore, I have yet to deal with this emotion. And instead of going, what's the point? I need to go, no, I just need to be a bit more diligent to find this emotion and feel this emotion. Does anyone get that? Yeah? Natalie, thanks. Um, I engaged in a conversation a few weeks ago with Peter at yep. my house. Um, I felt the threat of these spirits. Yep. Jade had a chunk of hair literally fall out of her. It looked like it had been cut out of her head while she was in the shower. Yep. And I thought it was quite unusual. And I said to Peter, I'm really aware that there's a lot of presence here right now. Yep. And I just tended, like I just sort of thought, oh, I'll still engage in the conversation that we were having. The more I did that, yep. the ante was upped. 
and like there was just this intense burning in my left ear and the rage that was coming at me, but the, the blackmail was they were then threatening Jade. Yeah, so the blackmail is I'm, I, I can influence you, and, and a lot of you have had this, haven't you? I know you've mentioned this quite frequently about how they tell you that they might not be able to harm you, but they're definitely going to be able to harm the kids. Is there any validation to that if I'm, if I'm ignoring... Of course there's validation. Coming. Because if you're open to the attack, then so is your child. Okay. So of course they have, they, what they are speaking is true. There is a potential of them harming your child. The key is, will you sacrifice the truth even if your child is threatened? See, and they realise for a lot of mothers, they will. A lot of mothers will sacrifice the truth. I openly said it straight yeah. away to Pete. I don't know if I'm going to be able to engage in the conversation any further. Exactly. Because you're receiving scared. the blackmail and you responding to it because of this compromise of truth. You're willing to compromise the truth if your child is being threatened. Okay. And the reality is most people in the world would say that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I don't feel it's a good thing, but... It, that most people in the world would say it is. So then if I'm not willing to compromise the truth... Yep, there's a chance that your child will get sick. And that's happened to you quite frequently, hasn't it, Joan? Yep. yep. So. And then is it still relevant to my hook? Of course. Okay. It's always... The reason why your child is not protected is because of an unhealed emotion inside of yourself. Okay. Always. So it's always something to do with yourself anyway. But they're just using that as an additional manipulation on you to change your behaviour. Yep. Yep. Certainly. So, so as these things occur, what happens is it becomes very, very difficult for us because if we're still in our bribery phase, we're not even going to really know what's going on. And as soon as we go into the blackmail phase with, with, with these spirits, then we just get barraged. And after a while, we get exhausted with the barrage. You know? So we just want to give up. And, and this is why many people give up the path on the earth. Because they just get barraged, barraged, barraged. And then after a while, it's just too much, and they just want to walk away. Yeah? And to be frank, many thousands of people that I've met have given up the path as a result of this particular process. Now, if we want to be good mediums, and we, I'll get back to the medium discussion in, uh, now about this channeling, we need to be sensitive to what's really going on. Now, to, remember I said the only way you can actually be sensitive to what's really going on is to be sensitive to what really went on with your own parents. That's the only way to actually become sensitive. You're not going to be able to go, oh, I'll intellectualise myself into sensitivity. Right? The reality is your soul needs to become more sensitive to the feelings that were being engaged with your parents. Right? That's what needs to happen. So what we need to do when we're reading even a channeling or we're hearing a channeling from our spirit friends thinking that they might be friends, we need to be able to feel, sensitively feel their emotions. That's the key. That, can you see? Without that, we are basically just experimenting with all sorts of dangers. If we can't feel the spirit, then who knows who it is? If we can't feel there's an accuracy or, a, or, and we can't feel that there's something off or something, you know, or they're speaking truth, if we can't feel that, then we are automatically already in danger because we now can be easily manipulated. And this is what we face as a team. The team can easily be manipulated. Now, if I can give you some examples, like at our, at our house of, uh, with regard to the environment team, remember... You did some channeling for the environment team and you decided, in this feeling that you had, you decided that, that a lot of the plants were feeling hemmed in, is the feeling you had. Yeah. Right? And I wasn't there at this stage, but, but uh, the others were all there. And the environment team then went around taking off all of the protective covers around the, around the plants. You know what happened the next day? We had all of the animals from our next door neighbour come and they ate them down to the ground. Now, that's okay, that's okay. What was, what was the emotion? This is, this, is the, this is the issue of, like, for me and Mary, we, we view, this is why we trial things at our place, because we realise things are going to get damaged, right? If we have people on the property going through different emotions, we realise things are going to get damaged, so it's not a problem. It's just a matter of what's the emotion. Your emotion is, at times, feeling hemmed in and controlled, right? That was your emotion. 
And when you look at the plants getting with the surround around him, you think, oh, that's my emotion. Now, myself and Mary were feeling, no, no, the feelings we had were, we're getting attacked a lot, and any opportunity spirits have to attack us, including on our property, they do, at this point in time. Through the use of animals, as well. the use of animals we, we've, had, we've had next door neighbours' goats come over and eat our plants. We've had, we've had a person with their cows three allotments away go through and bypass every other person's property and come onto our property and eat our, our trees. So that tells me there's somebody definitely guiding them there, right? <laughs> and there's my openness to this attack, because you know, both myself and Mary still have grief to feel about attack. And as a result, we get attacked. Does that make sense? Yeah. And interestingly, they, the spirits assisted this process by dropping this thought through your unhealed emotion to enable further attack. Yeah. And so what happened in that process was all of those trees in that orchard basically got eaten down to the ground. They're all, we have to replant the whole thing, basically. Does that make sense? Now, now if we were sensitive to that, we go, okay, we feel the emotion, we go, yeah, they feel hemmed in, and then we go, oh, hang on a sec, you know, is this... Is this a spirit telling me something, or is this a feeling that I have, or, or is a spirit manipulating a feeling I have, and so forth, right? If we're sensitive emotionally, we'll be able to tell the difference. Can you see? But if we're not sensitive emotionally, we won't be able to tell the difference. And so what we'll do is we'll act upon the information, and this is the problem with mediumship that we face. We finish up acting upon information that's false, you will always going to get some pretty negative results, right? If you act upon information that's true, then you obviously get some positive results. But we need to know whether it's true or not. And this is why I said right at the beginning, please don't pass around the stuff from the team without you knowing for certain it's true. Right? Because if you don't know for certain it's true, then you're just passing around the potentiality of passing around falsehood. And this is the problem with the, with, that we have in the team. This is also the problem with the communications team, but in a different way. The communications team has a, will have a public face and, and therefore they will interact with the public. Now, if they're interacting with the public and being influenced by negative spirits in the process, then the public is going to have a perception of the divine path, the divine truth, that's completely false. You can see how much problems there could be caused through this process. And these spirits know this. These spirits know, yeah, if I can manipulate that person and do this to that person and help this person do that and have that person feel this and I work with their, their unhealed emotion down there and, you know, work on the bribe and work on the blackmail, sooner or later I'll have an opening. And that's what they're doing right at the moment. Looking for openings to discredit the truth. Because if they can discredit the truth on a worldwide basis, you can see how much damage that can do. Many people for years, for years' time might not accept the truth as a result of that discrediting, where they might have accepted the truth before then. And it all happens because of something that we are not sensitive to. Yeah? You want to say that? Um, having known that I'm, I'm very influenced by these women's spirits, yep. um, I've been invited to... Um, talk about seed collection um, with the government yep. because you told me that I've got this emotion and I kind of dealt with it the next day and um, of course the email comes through and all excitement come and talk to us about the God, well, yep. about your project yep. and um, so I'm going on Thursday and I'm wondering whether I'm going to get influenced and I'm just going to screw everything up for <laughs> the God's way of love and we're never going to get anywhere. Let, now I've got this fear, you know. Like, you dealt with some emotions. Yeah. Right? And you've attracted an event. Let yourself continue to deal with the emotion about the event. Yeah. Don't, don't turn off the process. Don't not engage because you're afraid. Yeah. Do you I understand? want to engage, but I just like want someone to tell me, this is what you've got to tell them so no, that no, no. everything's perfect. No, you, know? like, you want to engage. Not, you, don't want to need, you don't need any of us to tell you what you need to do. Yeah. You need to engage. Engage your desire and passion. It's yeah. there inside of you. Engage yeah. this desire and passion. This is what we're interested in. We want to have a seed collection of all yeah. these different seeds, particularly native seeds, and we also want to have, because we, we want to actually get, also start growing some of them so that we can distribute yeah. them and so forth, because, you know, and even if it means giving them back to the government, I'm perfectly happy to yeah. do that, right? Yeah. And so you can even talk to them about all of those things, but if you feel your passion, yeah. 
then everything will go fine. Yeah, and that's what I've been feeling. Like, I know exactly what to say. Like, I wrote it even down and I was going to send it to Dennis, but I held myself. It's like, why do I need approval when I know I'm coming from yeah, a space of love? Yeah, come from the place that's yeah. pure. Now, when yeah. you feel that, like, if there's men there and they start getting a bit niggly with you, then you'll feel the women's spirits kick in with you. It's a woman, yeah. actually, that I'm meeting, which I'm yeah. really, like, I need to do. I feel like before then I've got enough feeling the mother stuff okay, coming so up, that she's in authority and I'm going to be trying to placate to her, and, but I don't actually need to feel that. I just need to be humble and... All you need to do just is just be open and honest about the desire. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. And it might not work out this time with this particular yeah. person, depending on what goes on. And you might yeah. have to go home and deal with some more emotions, but it will eventually work out if you allow the process to continue. I've, from the interaction already, it's been amazing, but I just get so excited that I'm like, oh my God, I can't believe you, you've even contacted me. Like I get to, like, I feel like and that's I'm feeling needy. much passion. Yeah, yeah. And exactly. That, see, that's out exactly. of your desire now. Yeah. And that's now yeah. into needing approval. Yeah, it's like, I want to like show her how fantastic this all is. Yeah, it's yeah, all, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, that, and I need to do... That's now needing yes. for a woman's attention and approval. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. just stay in your desire. Yeah. Does that make all right. sense? Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Let's look at the uh, channeling. Did you, uh, did you bring a copy with you? Because I want to go through some of these issues of blackmail, uh, bribery and so forth, just to help you see it in the, in the particular email, in the particular channeling. Now... Here was my general comment up front to Nina. And Nina's pretty brave to do this with, with me, yeah. if you think about it. My general comment. Hello, Nina. When you read my replies to the channeling you did, the spirits with you will try to tell you that I'm angry and resentful. And so, therefore, the reply can be discredited. Once you read this general comment, the spirits with you will try to tell you that they love me and just feel compassion for me in my condition. However, the spirits with you are not who they are claiming to be, and there is much evidence in your channeling that this is so. This is besides the feelings, of course, getting from the spirits. So when you read my comments, please instead just allow yourself to feel the true condition of the spirits with you who channeled this material to you, rather than listening to their thoughts. Can you see the difference straight away? Instead of listening to the thoughts of the spirit that are still coming at you, you need to start allowing yourself to feel the emotion of the spirit coming at you. The thoughts and the emotion will often be very, very different. Right? And this is where, if you're sensitive emotionally, you will be able to determine the difference between the thoughts and the emotions. If you just listen to the thoughts and allow those thoughts to enter you without feeling the emotion, then you are automatically in danger of just being hoodwinked by these particular spirits. Now, there are many mediums on earth who are totally hoodwinked by the spirits that they say are their guides. I went to... Uh, well, I'll give you a few examples. I went to one lady, and this was just, just out of curiosity. Um, John, took, John took me, the Apostle John took me. And, and she... Uh, and she was saying to me that her guides were the highest possible guides. Now, during the discussion, it worked out that her guide was actually in the second sphere. Her guide, the person she thought was her guide. And it wasn't even her guide. Her guides were actually social guides, but she hasn't even met them yet. She's still yet to meet them. And what she did was she started channeling this guide in the high dimension, right? Who is her normal guide she channels to every single person she does mediumship for. And she does paid mediumship every day for, for six to eight hours a day. So we're talking like hundreds and hundreds of people are listening to this guide. Right? So she's there channeling away, channeling away. And all of a sudden, um, and one day I'll play this, uh, this mediumship to you because it's very interesting mediumship. You can tell the feelings through the mediumship. And what I'll do is we'll bring it along and play it to you and you'll be able to hear the actual spirit step in and step out and what's going on. It's very, very interesting. But what happened was all of a sudden, two groups of spirits start arguing. I asked the question and the question was... Um, um, the question was about meat, eating meat, right? And this was like seven or eight years ago, this happened. The question was about eating meat, and I said to the spirits, I feel that we should not be eating meat. What is your feeling? Was the question. 
She said, no, 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 you need to be eating fish, she says. Right? And then all of a sudden, there's this, this medium who says, oh, no, no, sorry, I don't know what's going on now. There's a big argument going on. <laughs> and okay, big argument. Yeah, this would be right, though. In the spirit world. And she's saying, no, there's other spirits saying to my, my guide that, no, they shouldn't be eating meat. And my guide's saying, but they need to eat meat because they haven't got protein in their body and they'll have all these problems in their physical body if they don't eat meat. And the other goes, no, that's not true at all. If they deal with this emotion, they deal with that emotion. And she's relay. She, she, this is all happening in the spirit world and she doesn't realise I can feel it's happening. And she's going, just arguing. She, she tells her, she swears her. Bloody well, shut up, she says. To the law, right? And she says, um, all right, yeah, I'm not sure now what's going on. I said, well... How about we listen to the other spirits and what they say? And then she said, okay, okay, we'll try that. So she starts listening to the other spirits, and the other spirits say, no, this is a celestial spirit, say, no, there's no need to eat meat at all. And what will happen is that if you deal with the emotions that cause the degradation of the body due to lack of protein, so-called protein and so forth, then what happens is that that doesn't happen to your body, right? So that's what they, the information they gave. But, but her guide was... was saying this completely opposite thing. Now, that person had been channeling that spirit all of her channeling life. Now, I went to her one, one more time and, uh, and, we, and I sat down and started talking to her and I said, well, I would love to be able to talk to your spirit friend. And she goes, what do you mean my spirit friend? And I said, well, you're, the person you believe is your guide. I'd love to be able to speak with her. So I start speaking with her, her guide, through, through this lady. About ten minutes into the conversation, her guide, in quotation marks, starts crying, like hysterically crying, <coughs> due to the discussion of what we had. One day you will hear the discussion. But, and she just starts crying, and then she leaves her. This is the very first time in her entire life that this medium had had her guide leave her. And she said, oh, I can't continue the channeling. Um, the lady's she's gone, and I said, "Oh, that's okay. She's just processing some emotions. She's working out some truths that she didn't know before, and so forth." The this medium got so suspicious of me that she would not see me again, and to this day, she still doesn't connect to that guy. She lost her guy. She feels, and she feels that I caused it somehow through some kind of. <laughs> Some kind of evil intention, right? That's what she believes. Right? How does she earn money though? Sorry? How does she earn money though? Well, she had another guy, has another, had another guide now come to her, and now she, she has that person talking through her, yeah. <coughs> Interesting, hey? And this is something, because, because she was unaware of the condition of the spirit she was connecting to, she believed it to be her guide. And then when she, her, and unfortunately, this spirit wants to connect to her still, but can't anymore because the lady's not on the divine love path and the spirit is, and they had barely any connection. You know, she's still wanting to channel, you know, where your keys are lost and all that kind of stuff. And, and the guide's wanting to channel about emotional issues. <laughs> so, of course, there's no rapport anymore. So that's what's happening. So let's have a read through this and look at the different things that are going on with this particular challenge. So Nina says, hi guides. Guide says, hi Nina. Let yourself feel and open to your soul. It's okay, feel your fear. Okay. Why would Nina be feeling fear? <coughs> uh, there's two reasons why she was feeling fear. From, the, from these so-called spirits who are calling her the guides, yeah. right? And one other reason? Uncertainty of who she's talking to. Um, no, more, it's more something else. Right. Yeah, yeah, she's trying to get it right for Mary and AJ, right? So she's got this fear about us as well. So, so she's feeling her fear. Now, so Nina's just trying to feel her fear, and then the guy says, To our brother Yeshua and Mary. We would say to you, brother and sister, that it, if, it is, if it is not taking off as you sometimes wish in Australia. Now, I had to stop. I, I was commenting all the way through in a reply. And this is my comment. I stopped it there and then, we do not feel and have never felt that things are not taking off in Australia or in any other part of the world, nor have we ever felt a desire for things to happen faster. In fact, we both feel quite the opposite. 
So this is a totally inaccurate statement. Women spirits who do not wish any divine truth to be distributed to the earth and who wish to disconnect everyone on the path from engaging Mary and I have given this thought to you. The reality is that Mary and I do not have any emotion about how fast things are going. In, when I say any emotion, I mean we like it going slow. That's the, our real emotion. The exact opposite emotion to... And in fact, it is a problem for me. I, it's something I'm having to work through as to why I want it to go slow when, when, when it would be fine if it went a bit faster and I need to work through that emotionally. Does that make sense? The exact opposite emotion she was stating was the emotion I have. And Mary even more so than myself. Right? It is because, this is her comment again, it is because some of your brothers and sisters there in Australia, close to you, are not longing truly for God and are not totally, deeply passionate about truths. It is the only reason why it is hard to take off for them. But this depends on people's personal experience in knowing and longing to the Father. Now, the reality is, one of the main reasons why it's not taking off in Australia is because of these women's spirits. <laughs> <laughs> and yet they're not saying that. They're saying that it's because people... So in other words, what they're doing is they're blaming yeah. the people who are a part of the truths for not doing it. Now, the truth is there are quite a number of you who are yet to really fully long for God. I agree with that statement. But the unfortunate thing is that they're not actually seeing the entire picture because they don't want to see the entire picture, or you to see the entire picture. All they're interested in is blaming you so you feel worse about yourself than you already do. Right? So that's not very nice. AJ's comment. There is a tone of condescension and belittling in your channeling, as you have an emotion that Mary and I do not understand what is happening. So this is Nina's emotion. That, that, and many of you have this emotion towards me constantly, by the way that you do not think that I understand what is happening. Right? Many of you feel that. Or why it is happening. Many of you feel I don't know why it's happening either. Now, the spirits know that Nina have that, has that emotion. Does that make sense? So they can easily say that this is the reason why it's happening when the reality is that's not the reason. Right? The main reason why there is not growth in Australia or any other part of the world, is because of Mary and my emotions in the complete opposite direction of what's being stated. In other words, Mary and I have still need, to, and we're, we're now working through this fear we have of things getting too big too fast. Does that make sense? And we've had that for a long, long time. Mary, for different emotional reasons than me, and we have to work our way through that. But it's exactly the opposite of what these spirits are saying. And I say to her, if you were channeling celestial spirits, they would have a much stronger connection with our true feelings, with Mary and AJ's true feelings. And a stronger connection that, in particular, I understand better than anyone else at the moment, the reasons for the lack of progress on the part of some on the path. Like, and to be frank with you, the main reason why there is a lack of progress on the path at the moment, or seemingly so, is because of this battle you're having with these spirits. That, that, that's a really major reason for the difficulties you are currently facing on the path. It's the battle with these exact spirits who are now saying it's not them, it's you. You follow? Yeah. Not very nice what they're doing. They're, they're trying to play mind games with people on the path to make them start blaming themselves for what's going on rather than seeing the full extent of what's actually happening. Very, very nasty process. Mm. This is their comments. There is a lot in how they view you and we feel it would be good to address this subject to this group about their injuries of following one man and not talking to God as it is causing them to slow down their own personal progression and it doesn't do them a favour. Now the reality is how most people on the path still view me is with doubt and a lack of acceptance. That's the reality. Many of you are still in that state. Right? And many of you are not following me at all already. You are, in fact, feeling that you can do everything without myself and Mary to, is, is assistant. Many of you feel that way, particularly the, spirits, the people who are connected to these spirits. And so what's happening on the earth at the moment 
is there are many people belittling myself and Mary, even who say they're on the path, saying, we don't need you. Right? Now that's okay. I'm perfectly okay. If you don't need me, that's fine. But the reality is quite different to what this group of spirits are saying. Now, I've said, I have already addressed these emotions of how people follow me um, in, in the group in Australia on many occasions. It is interesting that even in this challenge, you do, in the channeling, you do not acknowledge that. Nasty women spirits are using you to channel error to us in the guise of truth, in the hope that we shall listen to you and then do what they want. These women spirits also want the opportunity to channel to others directly so that they can continue their program of disconnecting people on the path from Mary and myself. Now you see, when myself and Mary take private time off to deal with our staff, the spirits see that as a large opportunity. Right? The opportunity is that you don't get regular uh, sort of seminars happening or regular groups happening as much, right? That's the reality. Now, many of you then get back into your day to day grind a lot easily in that place, and there's less motivation to, to do things. And as a result, many of you even sort of feel. Uh, a disconnection from Mary and myself in that place. Right? And in fact, the spirits are trying to create disconnection between us. They're, they're trying to actually disconnect us from each other, either by causing you to go into rage with myself or Mary, or to go into some kind of needy emotion which I can't respond to, or so forth. They just want some kind of disconnection. And this is what they're trying to achieve. Now, these spirits are very, very clever at doing this. They've, they've done this many times in the past, you know, and they will do it probably for quite some time yet until such point that they actually come to a recognition of their condition. Now, the reality is that myself and Mary have spoken to many of these spirits, but the group is so large that the leaders of the group are so dark that we've yet to actually talk to them. So we've talked to some of the group that have been controlled by the leaders, but we're yet to, pardon me, get to talking to the leaders themselves. Right? Now in that process, we've, we've, there's been about 8 million women spirits who have found the divine love path so far. But there's 6 billion of these spirits doing this. And now they are, before what they were doing, they, sent, they were sending people to myself and Mary to project rage and, and, and other emotions at us to try to, to, try to upset us. And then every time they come to talk, we talk to another group, and then sometimes that group finds a divine love path, right? And so what happens is the spirits then go, no, we're not going to send any more groups. And in fact now, the men who control the economic and political system of the world, and the women who are these group of women, who are also vying for control of the world, both of them don't send groups of spirits to us anymore to talk to us. Does that make sense? Because they realise that if they talk to us, there's a chance that they might actually become convinced and so they don't, they don't talk to us. Yeah. Now, here, back to the channeling. Nevertheless, some are opening up strongly to their faith in God recently and there is new flow of longing and love flowing there too as it is happening all around the earth. Only we feel talking about this addiction of theirs caused by injuries, the addiction in other words to myself and Mary is what they're suggesting, the, the addiction of them following me, will do a real favour for them and yourself and to the collective soul condition and uprising coming in Australia and around the world. So in other words, what they're suggesting is that if people disconnect further from myself and Mary, they'll actually do better. And now what does that sound like to you? Like, you dis if you disconnect from the person who showed you the truth in the first place, we, you're going to do better. Does that make sense to you? Well, that's what they're suggesting. Exactly, you're more open to spirit attack under that place, certainly. There has been a lot of dark spirits, especially around this group of people living around you, I agree. These spirits are actually channeling. Right? And they've been nurturing their injuries as these dark spirits are involved to slow down their progression in the process of a collective change. Now, I totally agree with that. Total truth. It just happens to be these spirits doing it, right? And that, this, is the, this is the other problem, is that the spirits in this condition will just say a truth that they know. Oh yeah, that's the truth, and we, we can connect to that truth. It's another way of feeding you some truth along with some lies, so that 
you don't know the difference when you're reading them, right? <laughs> now, um, yeah, the, the reality is not very many of you have a problem with following me at this point in time. That's a reality. Because if you were following me, you'd be doing what I'm doing. The majority of you aren't doing what I'm doing. Like I'm getting up in front of groups of people talking about the truth. How many of you are doing that? <coughs> a lot of you are resisting that, right? Some of you are doing that and starting to engage that, but a lot of you are resisting that. A lot of you are even ashamed to even mention it to your family still, right? Isn't that the case? Let alone to anybody else. So, of course, the reality is that, that the following thing isn't really a happening thing at this point. And that's okay. Like, I don't expect you to. I'm just saying it's not the real truth. My comment about that was, although I agree with some of these statements, particularly the one about the dark spirits controlling our group, these women spirits are using the truth of the situation as a way of manipulating you and others. While you are channeling Nina, it is very important that you feel the feelings of these spirits who are giving you nice feelings in the guise of God, but behind the guise is terrible darkness. Now the irony is that a few days before this, she gave us this channeling, we had a discussion with Nina. And what happened was uh, Mary and Nina were talking with each other and, and Nina was saying how um, she notices that when she's around myself and Mary, she does not receive divine love. But as soon as she goes away from myself and Mary, she receives divine love. What do you think's happening there? It's not divine love she's receiving yet. It's good, nice feelings from these groups of spirits. Mm. And whenever they are around us, of course, they, they can't stand being around myself and Mary, and so they can't give her the feelings. Does that make sense? So, um, so we had this discussion anyway, and interestingly enough, Mary and Nina had the discussion, not myself with Nina. I, Mary invited me into the discussion, and the moment that I was invited into the discussion... Nina no longer wanted to have the discussion. So what's that, what's that say to you? Yes, yeah, sort of. What's happening, what, was, what was happening from the spirit perspective was that, was that when I come to the discussion, now they can't control Mary as, more, as easily. And what they were doing was they were controlling Mary by feeding Mary feelings that Mary was insignificant and Mary embraced it, well, at the time embraced those feelings still so she was still feeling insignificant right and so the more Nina said the more insignificant Mary felt and they were allowing that process to occur Mary's emotions allowed that process to occur but also Nina's emotions towards Mary of condescension allows that to occur when I walk into the discussion those spirits can't do that anymore and total disengagement immediately so this is the kind of things that happen if you notice your law of attraction a moment by moment. You'll see all sorts of things happening. Back to the spirits. But this tendency of holding on to you and expecting you to do things for them to change and get back their lives can be addressed to them. And if it caused people to withdraw from you for a while, it would do them and you both great favour. <laughs> As these projections are also very unloving and damaging and somehow pushing this too much and not taking action and keeping it that way is somehow not a loving act for yourselves and for them either. <coughs> now, you have to excuse, uh, like Nina's French, so you know sometimes the English won't be that clear, so you've just got to read through it a bit. But, but the reality is what's being said there, what, what is actually being said? That, that it would be better if Mary and I just backed away from everything and everyone did more work by themselves and, and you know that way Mary and I will be loving ourselves more because we're not going to receive your unloving projections according to her and you would benefit from that too because you, you'll deal with some addictions now it's all very subversive isn't it if you can feel the subversiveness of it now I, my comment was these statements made here are made by the women spirits who hate Jesus in particular and who wish to ensure that everyone around myself and Mary disconnects from us so that they no longer are receptive to the divine truth we are stating. 
Almost all spirit-influenced persons at the moment connected to the path are getting to the message from the spirit world that they do not need Jesus or Mary to connect to God. So we, we had at this point, unbeknown to Nina, had a whole series of emails from different mediums saying, you know, that we don't need you to connect to God. Like, personal emails to myself and Mary saying we don't need you to connect to God. This is where I felt in that path that they fell, then people had drift off back into other non-God, non-truth. Yep. Truth. Yeah, th these spirits do not believe in God at all, by the way. So they're using yeah. God yeah, and just, yeah, just they don't believe in God at all. Yeah. AJ, yep. last year, late last year, you said this, though, in some words, like you said, you guys need to go and do what I've told you to do over the last three years. Exactly. Yeah. So and can really you see how they're manipulating that now? Yeah. Yeah. You know, the reality is, I, in the, if you think about it, over the last three years, I've given you plenty of periods yeah. of time where I've not done anything with you, and these spirits are suggesting I need to do more of that. But, but I've actually done that plenty of times in the past. Remember last year, it was from like July to nearly December that, that I did that, just to give you time to work your way through different things and things to gel and so <laughs> forth. And I've done that many times this year, you know, periods of times, months at a time. I've done that many times this year. It's interesting, they want me to do it more. That's the interesting yeah. thing. Right? So, yeah, and, and I've said here, this is an effort to cause people to stop discussing truth with us. <clears throat> so in other words, to stop talking with Jesus and Mary about truth. You know, talk to everyone else. And this is what often happens. We, we often hear your discussions back at times. And we go, wow, how did that discussion eventually end up there? With that, because there was nobody there who was in a place of more truth to prevent that from occurring, you see. Now, I said to Nina, you yourself are in this condition with me, Nina. In that Nina herself, any time I walk up to discuss things with her, automatically leaves the conversation. So as long as she's conversing with Mary, it's fine. As soon as I walk up the conversation, she leaves it. And these spirits are influencing that every single time. And I said to her, this enables you to be a conduit for these spirits to make inaccurate, inaccurate and manipulative comments to us via yourself. And the way they do it is, is quite insidious because if I'm sitting there, I'm feeling the spirit. And the spirits know that I can feel them. Does that make sense? So I'm sitting there listening to Nina going, sorry Nina, no, this is just some nasty spirits. But Mary is not feeling the spirits as much, right? And she does now, of course, a lot more sensitively. But, but, but particularly then... She was more feeling her emotions of how inadequate she is. So what happens is a person, the spirits, can go with, with Nina up to Mary and reinforce to Mary how inadequate she is, and Mary accepts it, which is exactly what they want her to accept. Does that make sense? They don't want her to process it emotionally. They want her to feel, to stay in that feeling. Are they just projecting the feeling through Nina, or are they using... Yeah, and um, Mary so would often come that. away from a discussion with Nina going, hey, I don't know what's wrong, AJ, but something feels really off when I talk to Nina. Like, okay. not, so it's not, not necessarily the words. Not the allowing thing. herself to feel the spirits. The reason why she doesn't allow to feel the spirits is because many of these spirits have very similar nasty emotions to what her mum has. And so because she is desensitised, and far more sensitive now than she was then, but because she's desensitised to those nasty emotions her mum has, she desensitises to the spirit's nasty emotions. Does that make sense? Yes. This is why I had this discussion with you previously about this desensitisation of your emotions through the parent's emotional condition. Yeah. There was somebody else with a hand up? Yes, yeah. um, yeah, sure. I'm really glad to hear this because I've been in a bit of doubt of something that I did at my home again a while ago where Nina was. We had a, bit, a few groups of, uh, group of maybe ten people a song came through that I felt from my guides and it was about you and Mary yep. and it was to help us process our doubt and uncertainty about your identity. Yep. And Nina had, I felt she was actually enraged but she was crying, trying to change the words of the song. It had to have God in there. And yep. I'm going, but this song isn't actually about God. There's other songs about God. This is about Yeshua and Mary yep. and the purpose of it was to help process our uncertainty and doubt. Yep. And I felt, Nina, I don't know if I was correct, but I felt a lot of rage, but it was coming through with tears, and there was a deference that this song has to change. And yep. I didn't realise at the time it was probably spirits. Yeah, most of the time, been... those kind of things. You know, whenever your desires are being manipulated by a third party, you need to look at it, basically. Yeah, yeah. So, so if your desire is to do this, 
and you, then somebody's telling you, no, no, don't do that, and they're even crying saying, don't do that, then that's very highly manipulative, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. And how do many women use manipulation? Mm -hmm. Through tears. This is a very common so technique. So would that have been rage too? I felt like it was a lot of rage, but because there was a judgment on the rage, it came through as tears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can yeah. be. Yeah. yeah. Allowing these projections, they're saying now, allowing these projections without taking actions. So in other words, now, now I'm getting accused of allowing projections from my audiences without taking actions. Gee, sometimes you feel like I take too many actions, don't you? <laughs> and, and yet they're saying that I, I'm, I'm the opposite of that. And sometimes it's not loving enough. So in other words, I'm not now being loving enough. Because love requires action sometimes, and we feel that it would be very good for them to fully understand their needs in you, instead of seeking for God, as it will cause them to reconnect fully with their Father, and doing that, they will be real help and serve them. So in other words, the reason why, according to these spirits, that you're not connecting to God, is because I'm saying, I want you to connect to me. Now, is that the general message you're getting from me? Never. No. Okay. <coughs> Taking action and talking to them is also loving yourselves more, brother and sister, as somehow you are participating in these unloving actions when you keep it silent. And I'm going, wow, if I'm silent, then what am I going to be like once I actually start? <laughs> so this is my comment to it. This paragraph is the pinnacle of condescension on your behalf and on the spirits channeling through you. Our celestial friends know completely that we are constantly confronting people's addictions, like I am currently doing with you in my email to you, <laughs> and that most people, including you, Nina, are highly resistive to this confrontation. Is that not the case? It's been almost the opposite, wasn't it? Isn't it? This is why you have yet to personally engage me, because you wish to completely avoid any confrontation of error within yourself. This channeling causes me to be very concerned for you, since I can feel the spirits that you are actually connecting to, and they are the darkest women spirits in the spirit world. They give many women on earth positive feelings of love, which is just a codependent addiction through your unhealed mother emotions. Do you get that? Yeah. It's a codependent addiction to your unhealed mother emotions. You see, this is where, remember I drew the bottle with the lid open, Many of you ladies have this lid open with your mums, wanting your mum to love you still. And while the lid is open, you open to anything your mum tells you as a result, or any spirit who acts like your mum telling you a similar thing as a result. So if that spirit tells you it's all your fault that I don't connect to you, or your mum tells you that, you're totally open to it. You say, yeah, it must be. Many of you do this, yes, still. Many of you still blaming yourselves for your lack of connection with your mothers. Right? You still think it's your fault. You feel guilty. Every time you feel a lack of connection, you feel guilt. It's not you that needs to be feeling the guilt. Mum needs to be feeling the guilt. She's the one who created it. Right? But often it's the opposite person who's feeling the guilt because the reality is that we're getting told that it's our fault by our mums. And the reality is that most of us believe it, that it is our fault, that somehow we were unlovable. That's why mum couldn't love us. Uh, that's the reality. And while you hold on to that and don't want to feel the depth of that grief, which is a very big grief in the majority of the human race, um, while you hold on to that and don't want to feel that grief, you are now in a codependent addiction with anybody who comes along and just gives you a nice nurturing emotion. You think, oh, she's lovely. I wish my mum was like that. Uh, and that's the feeling. So um, even when we've given up on that hope, we have we we're still holding that emotion in our hearts often no I, because i don't feel if you emotionally give up on the hope then you won't have the emotion in your heart anymore yeah. the problem is many of you have intellectually given up the hope uh -huh. but emotionally it's still present do you see the difference yeah and how can you tell the difference though because like i don't i feel like at least intellectually i gave up a long time ago and the way you tell is through your law of attraction so what happens in interactions with women what happens with interactions with your partner? Have you attracted a partner? Yeah. All of these are indications of whether the hope has been given up or not. You see, for many of us, we still have codependent addictions involved with our parents. And while we have them with our parents, it's going to be very, very hard for us to involve a partner in our life. <coughs> yeah. Or God, for that matter. Because oftentimes what we've done is we've substituted 
God for our parents. So, so it's going to be very hard to connect to God while I'm still wanting certain emotions from my parents. I just wanted to ask, um, when I was a child, I was never allowed to feel longing yeah. for my dad. Yeah. And he didn't want me because my mother obviously wanted to keep me to herself and manipulate him through me. So he was like, I don't want to know this child. Yeah. But I'm discovering, as I went on the path, I discovered that that child wanted her daddy. Mm -hmm. So I never felt those emotions as a child. And if I'm feeling them now, am I just deceiving myself? Or do I need to go through that process of actually longing because I've never had a chance? Yeah, so. you do need to go through the process of longing and knowing that you never got it. Yeah, which and is I'm never going to get it. <laughs> yeah. This is what many of us avoid through the intellectual argument. We, we, we intellectually argue, oh, well, I didn't really long for that or anything like that. But the reality is that the child did yeah. long for love from both parents. Yeah. And the reality is that it was denied in some way. And there's usually a lot of grief associated with it. Ooh, just sit there. Um, I'm just going to need to stop for probably a few minutes. I'm just getting hammered by these spirits, actually, so I've just got to deal with that.